what is up youtube nimbus here back with another video so for today's video we will be talking about the easy v2 and the cream white colorway so this is going to be a two-part video uh the second part of the video is going to be my review my thoughts and opinions on the easy v2 and the cream and white so if you want to go ahead and skip to that part of the video i will leave a time stamped right now for you guys to go ahead and click or skip or whatever to that part of the video part one will be the legit check in case you guys are wondering what to kind of look out for when it comes to determining what a retail pair should look like and how to spot a fake in case you guys are wondering when it comes to purchasing a yeezy v2 in the cream and white colorway off the resale market again this is just kind of little things here and there that i've noticed that the fakes have not gotten quite down just yet they could have fixed this already i'm not sure but at the time of the video it still holds true for all the v2 models with the pull tab so obviously they're all the same models but um i'm gonna be talking mainly on the models that have the pull tab because yeah that's the most current model out there and i own the black and red and the cream and white i struck out on the zebras which i'm very 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 sad about but yeah so before i go forward i wanted to say that my pair the cream and white yeezy v2 is from ru villa i managed to scoop up a pair through a raffle struck out online you know typical story of everybody that went ahead and wanted to get a pair of the Yeezys. uh struck out online and I managed to get lucky and win through the RU Villa raffle or in-store raffle. I actually went out to Chicago and uh, took my brother along with me and we entered a St. Alfred raffle and a RU Villa raffle. So yeah, he struck out <laughs> and I managed to win a pair of my size nine and a half, usually on my size 10, but for some odd reason, uh, the b2s with the pull tab kind of run big on me um so i just go down half a size all right so time for the legit check so we're gonna start with the outside of the box so yeah clearly you can read it says yeezy boost 350 v2 style code number cp9366 in the c white c white c white colorway us size 9 and I have so yeah uh, you can go ahead and look at the UPC number uh, in case you guys are curious I'm not gonna read that out for you guys because you know you guys can do that for yourselves made in China you know yeah pretty standard all right so now we're gonna take a look at the paper that they were wrapped in so that you guys can get a clear and detailed look for what the paper wrapper should look like here is a picture of the paper that comes inside the shoe. So here you guys go. Again, very, very high resolution picture. Um, this um, might differ from uh, pair to pair. I know when the Yeezy in the black and red colorway came out, the papers that I got with my pair were different from the one that my brother had. So don't go by that. The I mean, who cares really about the paper on the inside of the shoe? Uh, we care more about the the actual shoe itself. So yeah, so before I talk about the little things here and there that I think are, you know, 100% tell-offs from a retail and a fake pair, before we proceed through any of that, just kind of step back a little bit. If somebody is sending you pictures of their pair, first and foremost, does the shape look correct a lot of the yeezys out there have this certain distinct look to them they as dumb as this may sound like a lot of people don't get this but it should have a, <laughs> a yeezy v2 look and if it doesn't then i would not buy it does it have that yeezy look and if it's structured well and if it's if it just looks like a yeezy and, and not something you know fugazi then Proceed forward. Um, if it doesn't, if the shape is off, just disregard that pair and just look somewhere else. There, I know the resale market is crazy. Before we go forward, the shape has to be correct. 
Okay, so with detail number one, a lot of people go off legit checking based off the pull tab um, on the back um, and, and its placement. And I completely 100% disagree with those people because the pull tab, um, from what I could tell, is assembled by people. It's not, you know, assembled. Well, this is, you know, me speculating, right? But I feel like the pull tab is, you know, assembled and stitched on by people. So there's going to be inconsistency issues with that already because, I mean, who memorizes where to, you know, place certain things in certain places? Now, if it looks blatantly obvious that the pull tab is out of whack and out of place, again, don't proceed forward. Okay, so now on to detail number two. I'm going to briefly describe what the midsole and the bottom soles should look like because, yeah, uh, the midsole is supposed to be like this milky translucent color. Um, under the right lighting conditions, you will be able to see through it and see the boost. Now, where things get a little bit interesting is the bottom sole is a different hue, um, you know, a couple shades darker than the midsole, so it's supposed to be a little bit yellower. So yeah just again midsole milky translucent the bottom sole is a shade darker okay so detail number three we're going to go over the stitching really quickly so the stitching is done in a predominantly white the stitching along the middle of the shoe is done in white the stitching around the sock liner is done in white and it should be clean it should be flush uh, again nothing or no stitching is hider, hiding under it any flaps or anything like that a lot of fakes sometimes the, t the stitching is very very hard to see so again that's kind of like a telltale sign right there okay guys so you guys know how i said that the pull tab is not a legit check for yeezys it might be on the cream whites and i want to tell you guys why so as i've said the way that this shoe is put together is done in a predominantly white you know stitch you guys can clearly see that the stitching on the back it's white but as i was kind of you know going over my pair uh, i noticed that the rectangle on the pull tab the stitching is done in like a beige colorway and this holds true for the stitching on the side part of the shoe where like it's it's stitched on it's a different color from the white stitching so i take that back maybe this is a legit check for the cream whites the pull tab might be it but it might just be just only for the cream whites because you're not going to be able to tell on a black and red again i don't have a, a zebra so i don't know what that stitching looks like again that might be a telltale sign again i don't know if the chinese companies have gotten this right straight from the get-go when making fakes but again, you know, this is just little details that could make a difference between you buying a fake or not. Okay, so now we're gonna go into detail number five, not really a detail, but you know, with all legit checks, everybody knows how to do this. Um, if you don't, then uh, yeah, this is one way uh, to just kind of get a good look at the boost, feel for the boost. Uh, again, high resolution picture for you guys. I'm gonna sound like a broken record, but you know, I'm just trying to look out for you guys. This is what the boost looks like, or at least this is what my retail pair looks like from RU Villa. Can't stress that enough. Um, if it looks off again, stay away from it. All right. So as we've all come to expect, almost every Adidas product now comes with a sticker. Now, whether it be an Aniki, which I bought recently for my brother as a graduation gift that came with a sticker. This is not really a legit check because a lot of the Chinese companies, I know for a fact, uh, have started, you know, making stickers that are very, very similar to the retail counterparts. You know, a sticker is kind of a ease of mind reassurance. It's not always the case. You know, again, proceed with caution. All right. So now we're going to look at the Adidas Yeezy on the insole. So where it says Adidas Yeezy, it's supposed to be very, very clean, very uniform, uh, no blemishes, no nothing. For the bottom part of the insole, the tray fold, I think it's called, the Adidas logo, is supposed to be very flush, very flat. It's supposed to, the pattern is supposed to fit the whole bottom of the sole. 
anything less than that you are probably dealing with fakes okay so let's talk about the prime net a little bit so while it does seem to look like an all white sneaker it is not in person i can tell you it looks way different so there are hints of cream here and there so pretty much the best way that i could describe it so obviously everybody knows what the zebra v2s are so wherever there is black on that sneaker it is replaced with cream on this colorway um still a very clean shoe and i'm actually kind of excited because i uh, there's i know there's a lot of people that make customs and stuff so this is sort of like the perfect canvas to go wild and create something unique maybe even create your own colorway i know i'm definitely debating on whether i should make a custom on these because these are just way too clean and way too white and as soon as you go out these will get dirty i don't care who you are how careful you are these will get dirty trust detail 647 so <laughs> that's just me trying to be funny but um based on all the v2s and all the uh you know all the v2s that i've had in my possession every single one has this little like pimple action where the end of the stitching meets the bottom of the sole a lot of the fakes just go straight down and a lot of the retails have like this little again pimple action that kind of just protrudes out a little bit again very good way of telling whether a sneaker is 100 or not in my opinion okay so this is beginning to be a very very long video i know i said this was going to be a two-part video so i think the review i'm just going to leave it for another day and if you have stuck with me please leave a thumbs up a lot of effort went into making this video and uh, stay tuned for the review peace